so for those of you who haven't come with the drawing, I'll show you how to draw the umbrella and the starfish. Uh, the, the chair is going to be very hard, so we won't have uh, time to do that, but I will show you the umbrella and the starfish. That's going to be very quick. So for the umbrella, start with two slanting lines. Can you see these lines? I'm going to actually outline my picture as I show you how to draw it. So uh, we're going to draw two straight lines. My chair comes in the middle so I'm not going to connect these two lines but you guys should connect them because you're going to draw only the umbrella. So make sure these two lines are connected and you're drawing two slanting lines. See it's a straight line at the bottom. Connect the two uh, lines with another straight line. Now the next thing is this upside down U shape. We know this shape, right? So let's draw this upside down U shape. Okay, so this nice wide upside down U shape. All right, and then connect the bottom like this. You want to curve it. Don't do a straight line. Curve that line when you're connecting the two ends. Okay, and then from the middle, we're going to draw segments. We're going to make them triangles. So make sure you give these. Now underneath each line segment, we're going to have this flap. Okay, it's, it's a flap that flaps in the wing, uh, wind, right? So you're going to draw two straight lines and then connect it. Okay, and then two straight lines. Alright, so that's the umbrella. Once you're done with the umbrella, at the bottom we have our starfish. So you can draw the starfish. The starfish is just a regular star with two of its, I don't know what to call it. Let's call it the starfish's legs. The starfish's legs are in the sand, so I haven't finished them. So just cut them off because it's hiding under the sand. For those of you who did download the traceable, um, go ahead and trace your chair as well. I'm not going to be showing you how to draw the chair itself. It's, it's, it's harder for today and I don't want to spend time doing that. So if you did download the traceable, you will have the chair, so just outline it. something to show you guys this is the picture I've planned for next time so this one is in August so this and this actually so this will be like for the younger kids and this one is for the older for uh, older people so these are the two paintings I have planned for next month the next month it'll be on August 29th it is a week later uh, but we will have it um, for next month so this is like five and up and this one is 11 and up so those are the two paintings we have planned for next month. First color we need is cerulean blue and white. So these are the two colors we need first. We need more white and very little blue. So it's cerulean blue. It's a turquoise blue. Okay, so that's the blue you want. And mix a lot of white and a little bit of blue. Thalo blue uh, is too dark. Uh, if you want to use it, I would say mix it with a lot of white. So you want just like a tiny dot of thalo blue. All right, so I'm gonna mix this up. Just a touch of blue with a lot of white. And then we paint the sky. And uh, I hope you guys remember we're using a flat brush and we go sideways, right? So sweeping sideways, up, and then flip your brush over and then you come back in the same direction. So that's how you paint it. And I'm painting around the umbrella. It's okay if you make mistakes and it goes on the umbrella, don't worry. Then you paint the colors for the umbrella, we can hide the blue. Paint the sky sideways, don't go up and down. You want to be sideways all the time.
gap for the sand so you can paint the sand if you guys have the chair let's do the chair the chair is next if you don't have the chair that's okay just wait for me for a few minutes I'll be done with the chair the chair is simply just white paint so start with a basic coat of white paint on the chair you can use your small brush or you can use your flat brush I tend to use my flat brush because it's faster but you can use a small brush for this or oh, by small brush I mean this one so this tiny thin round one you can use that or you can still use your flat brush so you just have to paint your chair white while you're painting the chair white you can also paint the umbrellas the stick in the umbrella also white so this is for some of the older kids so if you're five or six don't try this that's okay um, you can leave your chair and the stick white but if you're a little older try and mix a gray color black and white makes gray we're going to take gray and we're going to paint only the bottom of the chair to show that the chair is you know weathered because of the salty sea air the chair looks a little older so we're going to just add this gray color to the bottom of the chair to make it look like it's gotten old the starfish has two different kinds of red one is a dark red the other one is a light red if you don't have two reds it's okay just use any red you have crimson red that's my dark red scarlet red is my light red okay so two reds I have there's my starfish so the bottom of my starfish I'm going to paint dark red so when I say bottom only the bottom half and use a really small brush and paint it very slowly so you can stay inside the lines so once you're done with the bottom half the top half is light red okay so that's my starfish so you can see how the bottom of my starfish is dark because of the dark red and I've added light red on the top ready next step for the sand yeah okay all right so for the sand we are going to use burnt sienna which is a brown and then lots of white I am going to add a third color but if you're very young five or six years old don't worry about the third color just add the two colors if you're older then you can add the third color I'm gonna add a touch of yellow ochre just a touch okay to make the sand a little bit more yellow than brown so very very little of yellow ochre so the fur but the, these two are the main colors the burnt sienna and the white okay so that's the two colors you want so white and burnt sienna burnt sienna is a reddish brown so you can see how it's 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 uh it's nice and bronze looking so it's a brown with a tiny bit of red tone to it and then to this i'm gonna add yellow ochre So there's going to be a lot of shadow so we want to make sure that shadow is there and that shadow to get that shadow we add a dark brown it's called burnt umber it's a dark brown and that's the brown you want so if you don't have that brown mix a little black to your sand brown very little black don't add too much black I am going to directly paint but if you guys want to draw that circle in a pencil so you're going to create this circle make sure you've got that circle drawn out first you can draw it with a pencil 
then you can use the same brown yeah if you don't have it then uh, use white and uh, the brown whatever brown you have for the sand and mix the brown to a little bit of black for the shadow once you're done with this it's time for the umbrella for the umbrella i'm actually going to turn the canvas over because my sand is wet i don't want to keep my hand on the sand and paint so i'm going to turn my canvas upside down so that way i don't touch my wet paint i can paint on the umbrella without uh, disturbing any of my other colors okay so for, what's the first color we have here for the umbrella first color is orange so add a little add orange and then start painting the umbrella and when you're painting the umbrella you can mix up other colors as well so if you look at the orange very carefully it has a little bit of red here and there so if you're older and you understand what i'm talking about go ahead and then add those in but try and be inside the line you want to stay inside the line and use a small brush Wow. I'm using a flat brush because I can paint faster and I can show you what's happening but uh if you're painting it paint it with a small brush I'm going to keep going because this is very straightforward and easy the next yellow mid yellow or an orangey yellow don't use lemon yellow okay you want the yellow to be darker so my pack which is an artisa pack has uh, the name the color name is mid yellow so use mid yellow for the yellow in the umbrella yellow deep yeah that's a perfect yellow you can use deep yellow starfish and then we'll i will outline it one more time and then we are done okay i'm going to do the dots now we're going to use yellow for the dots lemon yellow or uh, you can use any yellow this time it doesn't matter okay let me zoom in so you can see how i do the dots you can even use the back of your uh paint brush to do the dots <laughs> and then you can outline next step is outline if your paint is still wet don't outline it now take a minute let it dry then outline it but if it is dry you can outline it and then you're good to go so i'm going to outline my chair your sand i would definitely say is darker uh, yeah. that's the reason i to um, i i don't know if i uh, if you remember i mentioned i use yellow ochre so okay. that's a sandy yellow color yeah. so burnt sienna is the color you have right now uh, no i no, you have burnt color. umber 
I have amber yeah oh, okay so that's an that could also be another reason then i would say go more yellow okay touch a very little bit of burnt amber and white so we want the sand to look This yellow one, yellow medium me no yellow ochre the reason why this looks this way is these are all exact color matches that go mm. with each other yeah. so th there's a lot of color theory involved in this but don't worry about it finish up the sand as much as you can for this section um did what question did you have for this one uh actually for the painting technique right like uh, uh -huh. you need to uh, wet the brush every time or... i wash yes i completely wash the brush and then i wipe it before i start painting okay so when i wipe it i don't even wipe it completely dry so what i do is i dab the extra color off the paint brush and then i grab more paint oh, so okay. the the brush is damp it's mm -hmm. it's damp to the touch but it's not dripping with water okay Okay so you wash it wipe it and then only you touch the color so in between when we are coloring this uh, sand i i felt the uh, brush was brush dry was yes dry. at that time what i do is take the brush and dip the tip only the tip lightly touch it on the water and that that should be enough okay okay very very little touch of water um and then it will grab the water that you need for the brush and you can start painting Okay. It's how much to dip and how much water it picks up is something you get over practice. So the yeah, more you actually. practice, you will figure that out on your own. How yeah, and when yeah. to touch. Even for blue, I noticed like uh, this part came very light. Uh huh. And here I felt it, it, the shade was too dark. You know when I actually for it. sky, I like it that way because okay. sky is a different color wherever you look. In fact, that is a good way to paint sky. Okay. So if you look at mine also they are not evenly the same color everywhere. If you're very serious about painting, I definitely would recommend you buy um this set. It's um 24 colors. It's it's only $24, so it's $1 a color. It's not very expensive. But the reason I like this is there's some of these very important colors that we use uh, and this is important to know what they are. Oh, okay. So, either one, if you see, you have burnt amber, and then they have uh, thalo blue. Those are all very important colors. Thalo blue, they have ultramarine uh, blue. I can put in the crimson red, scarlet red. All of these are very important colors. Okay. So uh, that is the reason I recommend this brand, and it mm -hmm. comes with the correct names. So any brand you switch, any uh, different brand, say Liquitex, which is the professional paints we use, those also have similar names. So it's important, and you can get the correct color. Usually, these give you a really good output. Yeah, these are actually not expensive paints, and you can see how mm -hmm. I can pretty much match Actually. color for color everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i understand yeah so i think this brown also like uh, since it's become little dark for me here that that is a different brown so, like i said mine is a more yellow looking brown can you see yeah, it's more yellow yes, it's like a yeah. sand beach yeah sand like sand color yeah we, we uh, that's why i first create the picture digitally so i can get all the correct colors match it up mm -hmm. then and you know, i i put it on canvas and i paint it or okay. i wrap the color around and i paint the same color on the side so say for example here i have brown on the side this part will be brown on the top this part will be blue so it's like in the side if you look the painting kind of goes and wraps around the side okay and so then the, the the third part of the shade is like you mixed both these colors um, i mixed orange. a little bit of red it's the same orange but oh. if you look at each and everything i have another color added to it so this is orange oh. okay. so here i have a tiny one brush stroke of red i have added here let me show you a close up and then i'll talk about it there we go okay so can you see orange and then one stroke of red here mm -hmm. just yeah. a stroke once you're done with the orange just place or you touch the brush and then you stroke it this red no Yeah, permanent red. I have. Yeah, that permanent red also works. That's your regular red. Do you have another red that's a deeper color? Crimson. Yeah, that's the last one. 
So oh, your permanent red is this one. Crimson red is this one. Okay. okay. So yellow, mid yellow, I do it. And then this darker color again is actually a little bit of yellow ochre. Touch of yellow ochre to make this darker. One half alone dark. That we can do with white and yellow, same dark yellow. Yeah, you can you can try. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, I would do mid yellow and then mix a little orange to this if you want. Okay. Just a touch, just a smidgen of orange, and then you can do that end. Okay. And then this is orange, and again one stroke of red here. This is red. One stroke of crimson is here. And then crimson, and then this part is a little bit of black or brown mixed make it darker.